Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, we are going to be taking the next step in our process of this design series. Uh, so initially when we started this in the garage, scanning the parts, uh, I wasn't sure how long the videos were going to be, but after going through the process, it's gonna be long. So we're breaking it up into multiple episodes. For this next episode, we've already scanned and we've processed the meshes in Creality Scan. The next step for that process is for us to go through the alignment process in Quick Surface. So we're gonna be using Quick Surface Lite and we're gonna step through the process of creating an aligned set of meshes. So if you wanna follow along, if you're looking to purchase Quick Surface, we are an affiliate channel. You can use the code LEAD10. Uh, that'll get you a discount on the uh, any of the versions, whether it's Lite or Pro or for SolidWorks. And if you wanna support the channel and you are buying and use that code, it certainly does help out and we appreciate it. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's talk about Quick Surface in the second episode. We'll then break up the rest of the episodes into uh, design aspects of it in the forms modeling space, the design aspects of the solid bodies, and then we'll 3D print, install it, and then we'll do a, a wrap up. Uh, so something to keep in mind, if we align multiple meshes together in Creality Scan, they are going to be merged together. Uh, so basically what you end up with, with is one. What we really want is a situation where we can have the bezel in the right location on the bumper. So that way we can design a duct behind it that we can use to, again, duct air to an intake system and then one to like a brake duct. That's the entire intent or the, you know, the kind of idea behind this. One thing I will say, or well, really a couple things, um, from the time I originally filmed the scanning uh, to now, we have Creality version, uh, Creality Scan version four, uh, which has added a couple of extra features. So we're gonna have to do a video and talk about that. Um, I ended up scanning this in the last version of 3.5 or whatever, 3.6. So uh, we do have some new tools that we can use in Creality Scan. However, we still have that. If uh, you merge multiple point clouds together, it just turns into one mesh. Another thing that happened between uh, scanning and now um, I came in and I started to record aligning everything together and I realized it would be much easier if I had a scan of everything installed in the bumper. So I went back and I just did a quick NIR large scan with the light and the bezel in place. I left the screws off of it. I just kind of pushed it into the bumper. And the main reason for that is because now we have a, a reference scan that we can use to align to a coordinate system. And then we can use that to align the version of the scan that doesn't have any of the pieces inside of it. And then we can use it to align the bezel to the right location. So now we got the bezel in place. Uh, and then we can use either the bezel or the bumper or something to get the light in place. Now the light's actually not very important in this case. You can see the light's a little bit off, a little bit twisted here. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the way that this works. We're gonna go through how to do it in quick surface so that way you understand. And then we can, uh, you know, then we can move on to the next part of this. Now, one thing that's important to note is there are, there's differences in features between quick surface light and quick surface pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle on quick surface light. And just to make sure that we have that, remember if you are looking to, to buy, we are an affiliate channel. You can use the code LEAD10 to save 10% and help out the channel. Light, I think is somewhere around $400 a year. It is a subscription and Pro is somewhere around 4,000. So you have to just kind of look at the prices that are available when you're uh, going to buy. But again, there is a big difference between Light and Pro, but there's also a big difference between the tool sets. So let's go ahead and start this from scratch so we can see how it works. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start a new file and we're gonna bring in our first reference. So I, obviously I have several scans here. We can do all supported formats. Uh, actually gonna focus just on STL so I don't open up a project file. So I've got the Starian light installed. Uh, so this is the one with the bumper that has the light and the bezel in it. So we've got that one. And we're gonna go to the QS menu, import scan data. And then we've got the Starian light bezel CL for cross laser lines. We'll import that. And then we've got the Starian, let's see. Uh, I actually did export another version of the light. So we have the, the back of the light, the NIR. And what I ended up doing was I took one of the sort of bad scans of the front 
and I just merged them together. So that way I had the back of it with the mounting points. And then I also had the front because I had one of the mounting points here and one here for the bezel. And that was my original attempt to try to align the bezel to the light and then the light to the bumper. So I had all those in place. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to import the bumper itself, which was with NIR. So we've got the uh, Starian marker bumper NIR large. So when we move this into the design process, the main thing that we're going to need is going to be the bumper and the bezel. And those are the things that we want in place. In order to get to that part, we need a couple of extra references. So that's why we've got everything that we have. So the first step in this process is to align to a coordinate system. And the way that we do that is to extract some primitives. I'm gonna use this magic wand brush and I'm gonna grab basically the front of the license plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and do an analysis, see how close that is. It's pretty messy because this is a, a large NIR scan and you can see the further away you get to the kind of the area of focus you can see over here the further away we get the rougher it gets because i didn't scan much over there and i did it at a pretty far distance so we're going to do create and stay and i'm going to try to pick up a plane off of here and one thing that i want to do is i want to make that plane uh, perpendicular to plane one so basically this is going to be a representation of the ground plane now you can kind of see that it uh, when we look at it here, it's pretty far off from the ground plane, but uh, that's basically because the the tag bracket doesn't necessarily represent perpendicular to the ground. Uh, obviously, changes in suspension, the bracket itself, uh, you know, whether or not it's on a jack stand or something like that. These all have big impacts on these things. But for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and run with it, and I'm going to say uh, create just those two planes. Now, the next step for me is gonna to be to align to a coordinate system. All right, so I'm gonna just go ahead and pick up on plane one. And you can see it's Z is pointing forward. I really want Z to be pointing up. So I'm gonna swap it so that Z is pointing up. X is going for the width of the vehicle. Y is going front to back. Uh, the second one here is gonna be plane two, and that's gonna push our coordinate system down. Uh, not really needed in this case. All that's gonna do is reposition its uh, location vertically. We're going to apply to all features, which will move all the mesh bodies, and then we'll close. So now when we look at this from the side, it's not quite right. Uh, it's not quite horizontal because we use the basically that inside section of the air dam as horizontal. And in reality, it's not. So what we're going to do is select this mesh, align interactive, and I'm just going to rotate it until visually that body line, which is essentially horizontal on this car, looks to be horizontal along the y-axis. Does not have to be perfect, but uh, you know this, this is kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, okay. Notice that doesn't take the planes with it. It's perfectly fine for what we're doing here. The planes were just an initial attempt at uh, getting that coordinate system. Uh, the other thing I wanna do is there are some extra little pieces this, on this scan right here. So I'm gonna select the mesh and edit. It says that we have three mesh bodies going to select this one, and that's going to get rid of this extra little piece as well as the tag bracket. So I'm going to use this one here, which is leave selected only, and then go back and close. So now we've got this in place and we've got this other bumper. So what I want to do is select this bumper, align interactive, and just move it out of the way. So that way I can select points to align them together. The next step in this process is we want to select the mesh that we want to move. And so at this point, we never want to reselect the original mesh that we aligned because everything is going to be aligned relative to it. We're going to do by endpoints. And then what we need to do is we need to pick at least three points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick um, a point maybe somewhere on the air dam down here. I'm going to pick a point maybe up close to this corner. And then maybe we'll put one over here on the side. So these are all on essentially three different planes. They're not in line with each other. Once we have three, we can select preview. It's going to put it into place roughly, and then it's going to go ahead and process and try to align them. And then we can look at the results. Now, I think overall that looks pretty good. Again, the main thing that we want to get out of this is we want to have the scan with the opening here. 
be able to have an alignment with the bezel and the light because that's the design intent here. Uh, if these are off at all, so you can see that it's, it's not quite perfect. Uh, what we can do is we can always go back and we can redo it. So I'm going to go to um, Align Interactive. I'm going to pull that out. Again, we're going to select it, align by endpoints, and then maybe let's see, uh, pick a point one, two, maybe down there. So we'll pick, those are essentially on a plane pretty close to it um, down here. And if we want to add a fourth point, we always can. So let's say, uh, let's say that we want to go somewhere down in this corner and then we'll preview that. We just need at least three. Uh, three is going to be the key there. All right, so it's looking a little bit better. There wasn't any scan data over here, and I didn't scan much back here, but you can see the air dam in there looks to be aligned pretty well. I think overall it looks good. So now that piece is aligned. Now we've got to deal with the light and the bezel. Uh, now the light's a little bit of a tricky one because we can align the light to this right here. Uh, so basically what we can do is again, use that align interactive I'm sorry, align endpoint. We just need to select the mesh that we want to align. We'll go to endpoints, and then we've got three mounting points. So uh, this side here is the turn signal. This is sort of the fog light, driver's light. So we got to remember it's it's reversed here, but what I'm going to do is uh, bottom point, top point, and that's going to be somewhere down here because the uh, this section here was done on large NIR mode. We're not going to have nearly the resolution. But and then over here, I'm just going to go to the right side of that. Over here, we'll go to the left side of that. And if we want to add any more points, we can, but we're going to preview it. And I'd say that looks pretty good. So we're going to say, okay. Uh, we can turn back on the original bumper and you can see how close it is. So you can see the light behind there. On NIR mode, uh, large NIR mode, that lens is pretty messy. Again, because it's, it's glass, you know, we're not going to get a clean scan unless we use scan prep spray. I don't really care about that. I just really want to make sure that all these pieces are in sort of the right location. All right. So now the bezel and this piece. So we want to align these. Once again, select the bezel, go to endpoint, and I'm going to pick, let's see, a point there and there. I'm going to put one over here and maybe one over there. So again, they need to be in the right order. So top and bottom and then two or three was over here and then four is over here so let's preview that and see what it looks like so i'd say again that looks pretty good we can do some fine alignment if we need to but you can see that it's popping through in some areas it's a little bit off in others but for the most part now if we hide the original mesh and we bring this one back, that bezel looks like it's in the right spot. So that's the key that we were looking for. Because as we're building out a duct, we're gonna want to make sure that the duct can attach to the bezel. And it also needs to be able to fit or attach into the location in the car. So if we wanna keep that sort of you know, original look to it, that's why we have so many different scans to make this happen. All right, so now at this point, what I'm gonna do is select all the meshes I'm going to go and export the scan data. And I'm going to call this one uh, Starian Bumper Meshes uh, for Intake. And there we go. We've got all the meshes that now we can take into Fusion or whatever CAD program that you want to start designing. Now, I'm obviously going to use Fusion in this video. I think it does the the best job giving us access to things like freeform modeling that we can snap to a mesh and then we can actually extract mesh section sketches and build out other resources and features. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hop into Fusion now with this mesh and get started on the design process. So you'll see that information in the next episode of this series. But if you have any questions on what you saw here in Quick Surface Lite or any questions on the process in general, make sure that you leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you want to follow along with the series. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.